Hi! So in this chapter, we're going to talk about all about probability, all its misconceptions, and just everything that we could think of. <laughs> so in the chapters eight and nine, you did statistics, right? Like finding the central um, tendency, measures of tendency and variation. And here we're kind of taking a little turn and we're going to learn probability. And the reason why we go in this order is because that way we can do normal distribution, which is in the last chapter of this class. And we kind of bring all of it together. So we can kind of just talk about and introduce the topic of probability, where we see probability as the likelihood or the chance, right? And so here, that's exactly what it is. It's like, oh, the chance of winning the lottery, right? That's all probability. In fact, we're going to do one with the lottery. And um, so we just have some like vocab and stuff. So like the experiment is the actual thing what we're, what we're doing. So if we're playing the lottery, then that's the experiment, right? So um, if we want to flip a coin or roll a die, that's the experiment. Subjective probability is kind of like just guessing like, Oh, like seriously, 90% of people love chocolate, you know? And so I don't really know that. I'm just <laughs> making it up because I think everyone should love chocolate, right? So um, the next one is theoretical. And that's the one we're actually going to be using in this class. We won't be using subjective, even though that sounds amazing. <laughs> we're going to use theoretical, which is the real math way. And that's just really finding the real chances of of any outcome. So it's really always about how many ways can I win or how many ways can that outcome occur and out of the total number possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into basic concepts. So the first thing we need is an outcome, right? Because if I toss a coin, it's going to land on heads or tails. And so the outcome is what it lands on. Even like a, a six sided die, I roll a die and it only has six possibilities that it could roll. So we just need to make sure that we understand that the outcome is actually what happens after we apply the event. So the event will be one outcome of many, right? So if I toss a coin, there's going to be two outcomes, heads or tails. And the event is, the, is when it lands on a tail and another event is when it lands on a head. A simple event is an event with one outcome, and a sample space is the set of all possible events. So when we actually toss a coin, the sample space would be all possible events. So the possible events we said where it landed on tails, and then it landed on heads. So the sample space would actually be tails and heads, right? So we're going to put this all to use right now. I love using a six-sided die because I feel like we've all played Monopoly or we, we understand what a six-sided die looks like. And if you didn't, I went ahead and put a picture of each side. So it's just six side like a little box and you roll it, right? And it lands on a number. So what would be the sample space? Remember the sample space is all possible events. So what events could occur if I roll a die? Well, if I roll it, Right, it could be, and we denote it by the word S equals and a curly bracket, just like a set, right? Because remember the curly bracket means the set of. So this is the sample space, which is the set of. If I roll a die, it can roll on one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. Could it roll a seven? Well, no, because there is no seven. The faces are only one through six, right? So we're not just arbitrarily putting numbers. We're only putting the numbers in which it's possible to roll on when I roll it once. And that's the sample space. And each of these pieces, if it rolls a one, that's an event. If it rolls a two, that's an event. So there are six events that could occur. Okay, so you kind of get the idea now. And so um, now we can actually maybe start using the theoretic um, probability. So this is the basic probability fun um, sorry, the pro basic probability formula. 
This probability formula I will repeatedly use throughout this chapter. No matter how complicated the problem gets, I will always come back to this problem here. And it's just because that's what it really is. It's just if I want to win the lottery, how many ways can I win out of how many outcomes, right? Well, we can only win the lottery usually one way, right? So, um, but then you ha you can share it, right? Many people can guess the numbers of like a super lotto quick pick, right? So it's always comes down. Now there are many different formulas and different ways we could find this numerator. And then this denominator, there are like a lot of different things that we have to do here, but like it really comes down to this basic fraction. So let's go ahead um, and revisit rolling the die. And if I go ahead and just copy and paste this sample space here. So what is the probability of rolling a three? So the probability of rolling a three is equal to, again, the number of ways you can roll a three out of the um, number of outcomes or events. That's what I should say. Okay, well, how many ways can I roll a three? Well, how many threes on the die? Well, just one, right? So I can only roll a three one way out of how many events? There are six possible events that could occur. So one out of six, not too shabby. Now we are, um, you know, in a transfer level math class, so you should reduce fractions whenever we use these formulas. We're going to learn how to round with probability, reduce fractions with probability, and percents. Okay, so the next one is, what is the probability of rolling a number larger than four? Well, a number larger than four, so the probability of rolling a number larger than four right? Not four, but larger than four, right? Is equal to, um, well, how many, again, number of ways that we can roll a number larger than four all over um, the number of events. Okay, so rolling a number larger than four well, how many numbers are there that are larger than four on a six-sided die? Well, one, two. So there's only two numbers that I could possibly roll that are larger than four out of six events. So two out of the six, I could roll, I have a probability of rolling a number larger than four. So when we do that, we go ahead and reduce the fraction, right? As we always promise. And so we get two six is one third. And now you're kind of getting, oh, okay, I kind of get it. So what is the probability of rolling an even number? So let's look at this. The probability of rolling an even number is equal to, well, the number of the ways we can roll an even all over the number of events. Well, if I look at my sample setup here, how many even numbers on a six-sided die? So I see a two and a four and a six. So I see three events in which I could roll an even number, two, four, and six, right? So three events out of the six, I could roll an even number. If I reduce that fraction, that is equal to one half. So one half of the time, I would be rolling an even number. And so some of you may say, well, what about what about an odd? Isn't the same for odd? Like if I the probability of rolling an odd is still three numbers, right? I see a one, a three, and a five. I would say you're absolutely right and you're absolutely on the right track because there is the same amount of odd and even um, events in this sample set. So rolling an odd number has the same probability as rolling an even number, which is still 50-50. So there's a sense of like that phrase, right? 50-50 chance. 
In this case, there's a 50-50 chance I could roll an even or an odd number. Okay, so the next type of probability problems, of course, are cards. And if you're older than 21 or 21 or older, right, you can go to Vegas or Pachanga or Morongo and gamble with some cards playing blackjack or something, poker, something fun. Um, and those of you who aren't familiar with cards, you know, I went ahead and put this picture here. So make sure you mark it or put a tab here because this is the picture that you'll need for a 52 um, deck of cards. So this is a, just a standard deck. And when we say the word standard deck, it just means that there are 52 cards in the deck where there are four suits, one, two, three, four suits, which are spade, club, hearts, and diamonds. And then there are 13 cards per suit. Okay. Because there are four suits and then 13 cards per suit, 13 times four gives you the 52 cards, right? And notice that every card in one suit is an ace, king, queen, jack through a two, right? Two through an ace. Now, it stops numerically at 10. These are the face cards. So let me highlight that. King queen and jack, those are going to be the face cards. So notice that there are only 12 face cards in a deck of cards. And two through 10 are numbered cards. And I'll go ahead and do that in a different color. So these are numbered, which means that um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times four, 36 numbered cards in a deck, 12 face cards in a deck, and four aces. So each card itself has four, right? And then um, one of each suit. So there are four aces, one of each suit, four twos, one of each suit. 13 cards per suit and um, nine numbered cards per suit, which gives a total of 36 numbered cards and 12 face cards. So this is why this is a really good like reference, right? So let's go ahead and try to do like a basic type of problem. So Bucky has a standard st a deck of 52 cards and wants his friend Satchel to draw a card. After Satchel draws a card, he puts it back in the deck. What is the probability of Satchel drawing an ace from a deck of 52 cards? And what does this say about the probability of drawing one type of card? All right. So Satchel wants to find out the probability of drawing an ace. Well, remember, probability is just the number of uh, ways we could pick aces out of all the possibilities that we could have. Well, I know from this deck of cards right up here that there are four types of aces. Out of how many cards could I pick from? Well, if I have 52 cards in the deck, I could pick any one of these, right? but I only have four types of aces. So the number of aces I have is four and that's out of the 52 cards in the deck. Now, of course, we always reduce when we can. So this is 1 13th. And if you wanted to put it in your calculator, you can. So let's go ahead and go over to the calculator here. And I'm gonna show uh, you how to put them in. So this is just really straight division. So four out of 52. So I'll do four divided by 52. And it'll give me a decimal. But when we have a nice fraction like this, we tend to put especially the ones with the deck of cards in as a fraction. So let's go ahead and put this decimal as a fraction. You'll notice up here, right here above, um, right below the data button, there's a table button and times 10 to the n. There's a fraction, improper fraction to mix fraction up here, green with green. And then it says F to D, D to F, 
green with green, right? So this actually means right here on the table button, the green part, it means fraction to decimal and decimal to fraction. So if I just hit second table, see it says F to D, it takes this answer above here and puts F to D, um, D to F. And hit enter and it puts 1 13th. And notice I could hit it again for the decimal. So I could go second table and it'll turn 1 13th back into the decimal. So this button up here above the table, F to D, D to F, um, is, uh, is great because it'll put your um, decimal into a fraction. Now sometimes if the decimal is too much for the, um, for the calculator, it won't. So you may have to go to like an online calculator that can do more robust conversions. But um, other than that, that it should it should work out each time, especially for a deck of cards. Okay, so now going back to the problem, so we found the answer of the first part, right? That was just the probability of drawing an ace. But in general, couldn't I say this that the probability of drawing any one type is the same? It's just the number of that type in the deck over the total number of events. So no matter what, I just said aces, but notice if I go back to the deck, couldn't I have said twos and I would have got four in the numerator again? Couldn't I have chosen seven? There are four sevens there, it would have been four. I just pick aces arbitrarily for the problem, but any one type of card has four in the deck. So to probability of picking any one type of card, there always is going to be four in the deck out of the 52 in the standard, which is 1 13th. So the probability of drawing any one type of card, drawing any one type of card is 1 13th. And so that should help you with your calculations when you're going to do more invol involved probability problems. So let's try a more, um, a, a bigger application. So here it says that um, a survey was taken of drivers admitting to running a red light in the last year. The number of yes responses was 500 and the number of no responses was 213. Find the probability that if a person is chosen at random, he, she has run a red light in the last year. So notice that they don't tell us the total number of, of drivers that they survey. They just say like 500 said they said yes and the 213 said no. So if I wanna find the probability that someone has run a red light. That's just the number of people that ran the red light over the total number in the sample space. So how many people ran the red light? So the, the number of yes responses was 500. So there were 500 that ran the red light out of, well, how many total were surveyed? Well, all I know is that 500 said they ran the red and then plus to the 213 said they didn't. So this just becomes 500 out of 713. Um, but in sociology or social science, we don't really give fractions. We like to see the decimal too. So let's go ahead and, and put this in the calculator. So we'll put 500 divided by 713 is approximately 0 0.7013, which means that this is, if I move it to the decimal over, this is 70.13%. 
So any of these three answers are correct. It just depends how the problems want the answers. So in the homework, just make sure you read if it says to round to a decimal, then you would use this one. If it says round to a percent, you would use this one. And then if it says leave your answer in a reduced fraction, you would use that one. Okay, so there's three different ways we write probability. Um, so we just need to make sure that we know all three ways. But by now, we are so proficient in our fractions, rounding, and percents, right? So we got this. All right, and then really what we're saying is 70% overall, we could say 70% of the time people are running red lights. That's kind of scary. <laughs> so here are some probability rules. The probability rules are really important and will help guide you to understand that, okay, this seems like a reasonable probability answer. So if I see something is impossible, like before when I said, could I roll a seven on a six-sided die? And you were like, no, there's no seven on a six-sided die. Hence the expression, Darlene, six-sided, right? <laughs> and so that would be impossible, right? So when we say the word impossible, just even in conversation, we're saying actually mathematically that that probability is zero, exactly zero, not around zero, exactly zero. So I said, that's impossible that you can hop on a bus to the grocery store. So being Darlene, the mathematician goes, do, 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 do. Oh, probability is zero, right? So mathematically, when you use the word impossible in language, we think that that's a probability of zero. When you say that's a certain, that's for certain. Mathematicians' brains go, do, 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 do. Probability equals one. So this means that the probability is 100% or equal to one if it's certain, like it's guaranteed to occur. So that means that not, you know, it's a little unreasonable to think everything's impossible or uncertain, right? The, in the real world, there's lots of many different, you know, perspectives. So we know that the probability will always be between zero and one. Okay. So the probability of winning the lottery is really low and it's really, really close to zero, but it's not impossible, right? Because people win. So sometimes that's where like the word luck comes in. And I think I love the word luck because to me, the word luck just means, wow, I had a slim chance of winning and I won. But some people just say, oh, they're just lucky. Like, oh, the world just gives them, right? The lottery. But Again, the word luck really comes from the fact that something's almost impossible that took her and it did occur. All right.